What's up guys, how's it going? Mike the Tech here. And today I'm gonna to show you how to speed up Windows 11 using Task Manager. This is very similar to what we did in Windows 10. However, a few things have changed, so I thought I'd go over those. Before we get started, I wanna give a huge shout out to Todd M, Leslie Media. Um, thank you so much for the support. Both of you guys have been supporters for so, so long and I really appreciate it. If you wanna support this channel, click on that join button or that thanks button below. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you wanna know is um, there are some changes in how we open um, Task Manager. So we can still use Control Delete, go into Task Manager and bring it up. That still works. But if we click on, or if we right click on the taskbar, we only get our taskbar settings. We no longer get the Task Manager option here, but you can still get it with a right click on the menu by going down to the Start menu, right clicking on that, and then going to Task Manager, and that will open it up as well. So um, it's a slightly different way to get to it, but it still works. Uh, let's go over the first tab, um, which is your actual process list. So we can sort by CPU usage, and we'll see which um, games are using the most. Uh, RAID is using slightly more than my Camtasia recorder. I oh, spoke too soon. But um, anyway, we can see which ones are using the most and click on them based on that and find out which ones we might need to close to free up some processing power. You can also sort by memory usage and see what's using the most memory. You can see that Chrome's using some and Vivaldi has 21 tabs open, so obviously it's using quite a bit. Um, and the lesser known thing is you can actually right click on these top bars and choose other things to look into. So we could say, maybe I wanna look at the GPU usage and we can sort by which ones are using the most GPU on our system, which surprisingly the desktop window manager is using the most right now. Um, I guess that's because um, task manager is open and it's rendering all these statistics at once potentially. Um, but this is how you find out which ones are using the most. If you wanna close one, like you say, look, the CPU usage is just too much. I'm gonna close this, right click, and you can end the task. Once you end the task, it closes and we can close that and it frees up more um, CPU usage. Moving past that, we can go into performance and visualize these as well. You can click on your CPU to see what your um, CPU is currently acting as and how, how uh, much activity is on the CPU as a whole, or you can right click and go to change graph to logical processors. And you can see what every single processor on your PC is doing at all times. And this includes cores as well. So I have um, eight cores, but it actually has 16 logical processors and I can watch all of them individually to see um, where the usage is mostly going. If an app is going slow and it's only on one processor, we might not have multi-threading support on that um, app. And you might be able to do some workarounds to speed that up, for example. Um, we can also check memory and see how much memory is being used, um, how much of our disk usage is being used. This isn't as important on solid state drives, but on a hard drive, it can be a bottleneck. So you can actually watch the hard drive usage to see um, if uh, it's causing that kind of bottleneck, uh, which is fine. We can scroll down to ethernet. Um, you may also have Wi-Fi if you're on Wi-Fi, but it'll show you your current Ethernet usage. So I'm not sent, I'm not um, uploading anything or downloading anything. So it's around zero with just some callbacks from different apps and things connecting online. Um, if this is going at a constant rate, like sending and receiving a lot, you might have an app that's um, doing things in the background that you might want to be aware of. This could be something non-malicious like a Google Drive or Dropbox, something uploading stuff in the background or it could be something more malicious um, like a virus or, or something like crypto running in the background um, without your knowledge. So you might want to do a virus scan if that's the case. You can also see our GPU and see how our GPU is doing in terms of memory, as well as um, what it's doing in terms of processing 3D applications or copying things and things like that. So you can actually get pretty in depth as to um, what all of these can report back on. Uh, we can go to app history, and that's just saying um, how much CPU time they used. So we can say that movies and TV actually used 30 minutes of um, CPU time, which makes sense because I probably watched a 30-minute show. Um, similarly, if an app is running 24-7, you can see that it's running 24-7 here and make some changes based on that. Uh, now for things that can actually speed up your computer, uh, if you go to startup, um, this is the impact to how long it takes to start your computer. Any app that says hi is going to 
make it take longer to boot. My last BIOS time was 16.9 seconds, which isn't too bad, but it's not too great either. If I wanted to speed that up, I can actually disable things and just open them on my own later. So I can say uh, disable Dropbox and disable Google Drive. Um, and then when I actually want to use those programs, I can open them. Um, that will speed up the amount of time it takes to start up Windows, but it can also mean that it's less convenient because these aren't going to be running as soon as you start um, Windows. So I'm going to enable them again because I actually want them to run. But as you can see, I only have like five things enabled. Everything else I have disabled because I don't want it running 24-7. Um, if I go to... Uh, users. There's not too much here. We can see if there's another user that's um, running processes without your knowledge, I guess, but um, there's not too much here that you really need to worry about unless you have a lot of people using your computer. Um, details will show you more information about all the processes running on your PC. And then uh, services is another place where we can actually save some processing power. So if you sort by status, it'll show you what is running and what is not running. Most of these services you do need um, because they're Windows-based services and they do things like manage storage devices, credentials, um, and if you turn these off, those things are going to stop working. Uh, so you don't want to just turn everything off willy-nilly here because it will stop your computer from working in a very lot of ways. However, if you see an application that you are aware of what it is, or you right click and you search online for what the program is, if it's not Windows related, if it's not something you use, you can actually right click and stop this service. But that's not quite enough. If we right click and stop, it'll stop it temporarily, but next time it runs, it might start right back up. If you wanna permanently stop it, you go to details, uh, right click on that. Oh wait, it moved, hold on. What can I try? Let's cam recorder. I don't want to end any of that. Let's see. So if we want it to not start at all, we open services and find the service um, that we want to change. So this is a Samsung service. Uh, here it is. This is um, mobile connectivity service. I don't need that right now. Um, we can go to properties. And here's where we can actually say whether we want it to um, start up automatically or not run at all. So in startup type, it's set to automatic, which means it'll start as soon as you turn on Windows. Um, delayed start means it waits until Windows starts and then it loads it after. And then um, disabled means it will no longer start up at all and you're actually saving speed on your computer because the less processes you have running, the faster your computer can, you know, theoretically run. Um, so hit apply and that'll stop running and it won't start the next time it's going. You can always turn this back on by going back into services, just clicking open services right here. Or you can actually go to start, run, and type in services.msc and press enter and it'll open up as well. So yeah, um, that's a kind of basic outline of the new task manager in Windows 11. If you have any questions uh, regarding the new task manager, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll be happy to make a new video or answer in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Peace. What? You've never heard of stream savers and you thought PewDiePie was the only YouTuber to make a game? <laughs> I made a game too, and it's called Stream Savers, and it's available for pre-order right now for $9.99, and that's a great price.